I don't think you need a ruler, just eyeball it. Eyeball it? Eyeball it. Well, it's one of the events in the physics Olympics. There are, are uh, quite a number of them, and each year we try to come up with new ones. Uh, mine happens to be technically very complicated. If you notice what's going on behind me, they're trying to get the two oscillators to unblock a beam of light for as long as possible. One, two, three, go. The Olympics Day is a competition. We have teams. Uh, they have to solve various physics problems of different degrees of difficulty, both theoretical and experimental in the different contests during the day. So it's a, it's a serious academic competition, but it also uh, has a fun side. So they have to build a telescope to read this. So that's what they're doing. They're given three lenses. They have to use two of the three to make a telescope to read this very tiny uh, letters. Move it closer. I mean farther, farther, farther. All right. Okay, this event is called Lost Your Marbles. You'll be given two tubes, and using those tubes or any other method you want, you need to estimate how many marbles are in this big tube. You can't pour them out of the big tube and count them, but you can inspect it. You can look at them, you can count how many are in the top, but what you can't do is, is of course, use your x-ray vision and count all the way down. Then we got the number of marbles in here. Then we calculated the volume of this cylinder and the volume of that cylinder. And we used a simple ratio of how many marbles fit in this volume and therefore how many marbles would it fit in that volume. We got pretty close in a number of events last year, but I mean, people are really, it's, it, it, it ends up really close. So. There is, I believe, a competition for best cost. Yes. Another event was It's a Gas, where they're given two balloons, one with a very light gas, helium, and another balloon with a very heavy gas. Well, they have to determine the densities of these two gases. Um, the other event is one called May the Force Be With You, where they had to create a, an electromagnet using a battery and some uh, various types of metal. Yeah, you have to know things, but it's not just that. It's also being able to creatively apply them in order to solve the problem you're given. This probably works better if I have my Indiana Jones outfit on. So. <laughs> the demonstration show is um, one of the things we do to entertain the students while the scores from the earlier competitions are being tallied up. There you go. Oh. <laughs> okay. So the wave starts out, I cannot move my hand at the speed of sound, but the wave starts out slower than the speed of sound and goes faster and faster and faster as it gets down into the less and less massive parts of the thing with less and less inertia, and eventually it breaks the speed of sound. Now we can also, I can scoop out some of this gas. <laughs> you can see that as the sound gets higher and higher in pitch, that's higher frequency, shorter wavelengths. We like to do demonstrations that both teach the students some science and are a lot of fun, uh, involving big sparks or loud noises or unexpected phenomenon such as a magnet levitating in the air above a superconductor. And then at the end we'll be giving away prizes for first, second, and third place for each individual event and also an overall first, second, and third for the best overall score over all the events. It's awesome. awesome. <laughs> totally unexpected. Definitely, yeah. If we can get these kids to talk about what they did at the dinner table, we've been successful.